Ever wondered why your rates are so high? Well, that's because there is corruption in council and it's openly condoned. Let's pretend you have your own business and your employees came to work not to work for you but to work for themselves. You have one particular manager who has a business venture which survives off the infrastructure and the staff which you employ. From that business venture, he makes money which he banks into a bank account only he can access. He has put this in place with a previous manager with who he signed a contract under a trading name. So your company is now effectively contracting to your new manager under a fictitious name and he is contracting to himself. He has rebranded your company and he has rebranded his business venture so that depending on which way you look at it, you are either looking at your company or a business venture that belongs to him. Would you bury your head in the sand and pretend it wasn't happening or would you do something proactive about this scenario? Well, it depends on who you are. A company which ignores this would go under, but councils would just increase their rates because they finally find that they haven't got enough resources and each money to cope with the scenario. White collar crime is increasing. This is not surprising because in councils and in government departments, we have very little controls or accountability to white collar crime and events such as the one I'm about to describe. This is the Animal Welfare Institute of New Zealand's building. It is situated at the concourse at Waitakere. It is actually a council owned asset. It is the council dog control, which has been rebranded and no one seems to care because I am certain so much more of this kind of thing is going on. Paul Harvey was the mayor of Waitakere City Council. The new mayor, Len Brown of Auckland Council, he is the same. He doesn't care what's gone on. He says it's historic and he will not be investigated. The central figure in this is a person called Neil Edward Wells. Neil Edward Wells and Bob Harvey worked together in the McHarman um, Advertising Agency, which was owned and operated by Bob Harvey. And they ran a campaign in the 1974, and as a result of this, the Kirk government got into power. Neil Wells left the McHarman uh, Advertising Agency and became the head of the RNZ SPCA. He went on to get a law degree in animal welfare. Bob Harvey became mayor of Waitakere City in 1992. Neil Wells, in 1994, approached him with an idea of amalgamating dog and stock control with animal welfare and asked to start a trial program which would use the staff and facilities of Waitakere. Dog control has been a responsibility of local government. It is to undertaken by um, councils, and in this case, the head of the council dog stock control was Tom Didovich. He was at Waitakere City Council, which is now amalgamated with Auckland Council. Animal welfare, on the other hand, is a central government responsibility which is undertaken through the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry and delegated through to the RNZ SPCA. The RNZ SPCA was the only organisation in New Zealand prior to 1999 which could enforce the animal welfare legislation. It was Neil Wells's idea to amalgamate the dog and stock control with animal welfare. He was going to do this through the Territorial Animal Welfare Services for which he had a business plan and he was going to train the staff at councils and charge the councils for facilitating this and um, all animal welfare work was going to be done through his trading name. There was no legislation in place to allow councils to be involved with animal welfare or for another body to be able to enforce the animal welfare laws apart from the RNZ SPCA. 
so Neil Wells volunteered to write the legislation. Any contacts in Parliament and he wrote the number one bill before becoming the independent advisor to the select committee without declaring the fact that he had a business plan for which he was secretly writing the bill so that could be facilitated through it. When the bill passed uh, and got royal assent, Neil Wells made an application to the then minister John Luxton. He made this application on the 22nd of November 1999 in the name of the Animal Welfare Institute of New Zealand and signed as trustee. When in fact no trust existed, he made the false statement to the minister that a, a charitable trust has been formed and was going to be registered. He could not register such a trust because you need to have a trust in the first place and nothing was in place and nothing existed at that time. He attached a blank trust deed which hadn't been dated, which had not been signed. This is the document that Math and the Minister relied upon as being true and there's no other person involved in the application at all. The Minister wanted to be assured that the councils were going to allow their dog and stock control officers to be involved in this venture, so they wanted consent from the councils. Instead of getting a consent from the council, Neil Wells got his accomplice, Tom Didovich, to write letters on behalf of North Shore and Waitakere City Council giving approval for the council's dog and stock control officers to be used in the AWINS venture. In December 2000, the then minister wrote to Neil Wells and approved the Animal Welfare Institute of New Zealand, which he believed was an incorporated society for approved status under the new legislation. It was gazetted on the 18th of January 2001 and the words INC were removed shortly after when Neil Wells wrote in to say that it was a trust and not an incorporated society. Even at that stage he never provided a trust deed. The Ministry of Agriculture and the Minister never saw a trust deed until 2006 when a very suspect looking trust deed was presented. A memorandum of understanding was signed between the Animal Welfare Institute of New Zealand and the Animal Welfare Services in Waitakere. This would be fine if the Animal Welfare Institute of New Zealand was an incorporated trust. It would then be able to sign in its own name. Instead, Tom Didovich signed the contract with Neil Wells, who was posing as the Animal Welfare Institute of New Zealand, without defining who or what it is. The contract was signed not with Waitakere City, but with the division of the Waitakere City for the approval of the use of the staff and infrastructure by AWINS. Tom Didovich was found in a compromising position with one of the staff members and had to leave. So to preserve the whole scenario, Neil Wells had to apply for the position. He gave up his lecturing position at Unitech and without declaring that he was the one and only person involved with AWINS, made an application for Tom Didovich's job. He used the mayor as one of his references. Once he was in this position, he looked at rebranding and rebranded both the council vehicles, the council buildings and the gates at the front so that they all looked the same as the logo that he used for the Animal Welfare Institute of New Zealand Trust, or rather the approved organisation. He then got Wynne Hoadley to pose as a chairperson and using the Waitakere City Council logo sought donations for the Waitakere Animal Welfare Fund using the heading of animal welfare and the post the telephone numbers for the council buildings. The logo, of course, was deceptively similar to the buildings and reinforced that the Animal Welfare Institute was 
the council premises. It was so confusing that in 2008, MEF undertook an audit and they stated that it was at times difficult during the audit to distinguish where the structure of Awins finished and where Waitakere City began. Hence, it was all times difficult to separate the Awins organisation from that of Waitakere City Council. This is how the fraud worked. The council dog control officers were trained to be animal welfare officers. This training was paid for by council through Tom Didovich and Neil Wells received the profits. The council dog control officers eventually became warranted animal welfare officers under the fictional AWINS run by Neil Wells. They were required to prioritise animal welfare work over their council dog and stock control work. Even though the council paid them, they were using the council vehicles to pick up animals under the Animal Welfare Act and return them to their building to report the matter to their boss. Their boss, Neil Wells, reported to the head of the fictional Awins, which of course was himself. He, as the head of Awins, decided on prosecution and passed the prosecutions on to their barrister, Neil Wells, for prosecution. Diversion or prosecution would result in a payment and this was paid into a bank account which only Neil Wells administered in the name of the Animal Welfare Institute of New Zealand. Council has no official record of consenting to this concept. In 2013 the council premises were rebranded. Council will not advise why this occurred. This seems to be a big secret that I'm not allowed to find out about. What has Auckland Council done about it? Well, I was stopped from communicating with councillors. My emails were blocked. Wendy Brown Brandon, the council for council, insists that they're not going to investigate and she cannot see that there was a fraud here. I was not allowed to speak about it at council meeting. And I have to question how much more of this type of activity is going on, given the actual protection that this appears to be getting. I have identified other trusts and I have identified other instances in Auckland Council which appear to be connected, but no one wants to know. I think Awins is the tip of the iceberg. The cover-up has been affected by taking me to court for defamation. I was denied a defence, and on the uncorroborated evidence of Mr. Wells, I was fined $57,500 and $41,000 costs. Now, what kind of criminals do get that kind of penalty? I can't think of any. I used to be a police prosecutor. I'm a licensed private investigator. This is the penalty I got for speaking the truth. The court has been continually misled. The press will not report it. My appeals, etc. have been blocked. Neil Wells has been using the charitable dollar to fund the lawyers who have blocked me and cost me well over $300,000 to question corruption. The Ministry of Primary Industries, who was previously MAF, have rec recommended AWINS to the Minister to become an approved organisation without checking to see if it in fact existed. They have spent the past seven years covering up. If they had done their job, I would not have been sued. MAF never had a trust deed on file. My simple question to them in 2006 is why did you give law enforcement powers to a non-existent organisation? That is a question I should have been able to ask quite safely. Auckland Council, who was previously the Waitakere City Council, doesn't seem to care about it. My question to Council in 2006 is, why is a Council Manager contracting Council resources to himself? And why do you not have a trust deed on file? Without claiming to know the background, Len Brown made an impromptu decision at a Council meeting that it simply wasn't going to be investigated. The Councillors don't appear to have any control of the Council, and recent events have shown that Council officers and managers actually have the control of the council and are completely 
um, keeping the councillors in the dark. New Zealand, as it turns out by Transparency International's statistics, is the least or one of the least corrupt countries on the perception index. The word perception is left out repeatedly and the reality is that we are number three because we hide corruption so well. Anyone hearing my story would certainly think twice about questioning corruption in New Zealand. You can stop corruption, simply don't vote for those who condone it. I would suggest that any of the incumbents in Auckland Council should be at the top of your list to put a scratch through. Do not tick for them, do not vote for them. Anyone who has stopped me from speaking up about this horrendous public crime should be off your voting paper. So please do your bit these elections and vote for people who do not support corruption. Government censorship protects us from reality. Math and all the other government departments have been negligent in not allowing me to get an inquiry into the provision of AWINS with an approved status. Thank you.